What's going on YouTube? Bryce Builds It All, your favorite AMP IA and Part 147 instructor. I'm back with another video. And in this video, I want to talk about what is it that aircraft mechanics do? What exactly is our job? If that interests you, stick around. Now, before I even say anything on this topic, I want to start by saying I have nowhere near enough time to cover all of the career paths or every single opportunity in aviation. It's the 10 minute video. That's why I try to keep them to. So I'm not going to say anything. So if I, everything. So if I don't say what you do, don't take it wrong. If I don't mention what you do, or if there's something else you do, drop it below in the comments. Let us know what your job is as an aircraft mechanic. What things do you do on a regular daily basis? Maybe the new crop of AMPs that like to watch my videos will see that and get inspired. So numero uno, number one, the first thing that uh, most aircraft mechanics do, a lot of my students when they graduate, the kind of job that they will go get is something in the airlines. And you hear a lot of people talk about airlines, major airlines, 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 as if it's like the holy grail of work. And the truth is, the wages in the airlines are really, really high. Airlines is where you're gonna be making that starting pay of 35 to $40 an hour, and then topping out between 65 and $70 an hour, making a lot of money. But airline maintenance is very different than, uh, or airline slash flight line maintenance, I should say, is very different than MRO work or back shop work or 145 work. And what your aircraft or what your airline mechanics are typically doing is your A check, B check, C checks, your tire, wheels, brakes, inspections, those routine things at hubs to keep aircraft in the air. If something comes up that needs to be fixed, they're going to fix it. If they're working at a major hub, then they're actually going to be doing a little bit heavier maintenance operations there, you know, actually stripping the interior out, doing full inspections of the aircraft, um, fixing things that are broken and that type of work. It's very involved. Um, it's very rewarding. Everyone I know that does it absolutely loves their job. They love what they do and they make a lot of money. Uh, so airlines, it kind of depends on what you do in the airlines. There's some people you don't have to be an AMP. You can go work ground and you can throw bags all day, but that's not an aircraft mechanic. That's ground crew. And like I said, as aircraft mechanic, you could be, you can be on the line. You can be out there fixing aircraft at the gate, working on things at the gate, or you can be at a major hub in an actual maintenance facility doing A checks, B checks, and C checks, which is just the term for the phase inspections that get done on major aircraft. Uh, the second thing that a lot of people will go do is work for an MRO or a maintenance repair organization. Now you might be thinking, how is it, what's an MRO and how is that different from an airline? Well, an MRO is something uh, like Boeing or uh, ST Engineering or someplace that is doing maintenance and repair. It stands for maintenance repair organization for client aircraft. So maybe Alaskan Airlines, maybe UPS, FedEx, will bring them their aircraft when they need phase inspections done, when they need modifications done, when they need um, things done to them, and the MRO is going to do that work. The nice thing about an MRO is, you know, they've got five or six hangars and you're working in those hangars on those aircraft, kind of doing the same or similar things every single day. Some of the most common ones out there that I've seen that my students personally will go work for do like cargo mods. So they'll take an aircraft that has been formerly a passenger airplane They'll take all the, all the passenger seating out of it. They'll take all the windows out of it. They'll take all the furnishings out of it. And then they'll put in a cargo rail system and they'll put on a cargo door system. So it's a lot of heavy structures. It's a lot of um, heavy sheet metal work to convert the aircraft from being a passenger aircraft to an air cargo aircraft. And that's, like I said, typically something you're gonna find at an MRO or maintenance repair organization. Well, then we can get into the actual 145 repair stations and like in and that would include like your engine overhaul facilities your propeller overhaul facilities your so on and so forth and so on and so forth you know ga general aviation and even major airlines and wide body aircraft do a lot of the same things ga just does it on a much smaller level so ga yes you can take an engine off and get it overhauled you can take an engine off a airline and get an overhaul the difference is see a uh, Southwest Airlines is pulling a CFM 56 that weighs 15 tons. I don't know that it actually weighs that much. So if you want to correct me in the comments, go ahead. I'm just using an example. As opposed to general aviation, you're pulling something like a Lycoming 0320 that only weighs two or 300 pounds and you can do it with an engine hoist, but the operation is the same. It goes to a 145 repair station for an overhaul facility. And all they do is overhaul engines. They don't pull them off. They don't put them back on. They, they bring them in, they disassemble them, they clean everything, they inspect everything, they reassemble it with all new parts and what needs to be replaced, then they go over to the test stand, they test it, they put it in a box and they send it, they send it back to the client so that they can reinstall it on their aircraft. 
doesn't like I said, it doesn't matter if it's a GA facility or a big facility like Standard Aero that overhauls turbine engines, but that's all they're doing all day is taking turbine engines and overhauling them and sending them back out. And that's just one example. You could overhaul you, you could overhaul engines, you can overhaul propellers, you can overhaul landing gear, you can overhaul just about anything um, that needs to be done. Then you have some of your more specialized fields in aviation. Again, I'm not mentioning everything. A big one in GA and also in, in heavy maintenance is avionics technicians. Avionics, obviously these aircraft have been in service for a long time. A lot of people think this is actually an avionics lab. It's not, it's set up like one, um, but this is actually our training lab that we use for basic electricity and airframe electricity where they build this box you see behind me, uh, besides the point. But avionics, what they're doing is usually installing new radios because the old ones are very big, they're very heavy, um, they don't do a lot of things, and well, they're there. But if I take all that stuff out and I install new radios, well, now I can have all kinds of things, especially in general aviation, because these came with what we like to call steam gauges. That's for one of my coworkers that hates that we call them steam gauges. But you pull the steam gauges out and you'll end up going with a glass panel um, that gives you an artificial uh, synthetic vision. It gives you digital engine instru instruments. It gives you all of those things and you no longer are looking at little round steam gauges. But somehow in that process, you also lost like 30 pounds uh, on the total weight of the aircraft because the new radios are so much lighter than the old radios. Now, I know a lot of that still kind of happens with some of your newer aircraft. It's not uncommon um, that avionics people are doing swaps for you know upgraded panels, but they're also fixing things. That just like overhauling an engine, sometimes radios go bad and the radio gets sent in and the radio gets overhauled. This is something that's called referred to as like a back shop position. When they say send it to the back shop, they're saying send it to the, the overhaul facility or wherever that will take apart the radio and actually repair the radio and then send it back to you fixed. It's just another career option for you to do. Um, I'm trying to think what else there is out there. Like I said, there's, there is quite a lot of things. There's painting and refinishing places that all they do is paint aircraft. There's places that just redo interiors and in aircraft. They take out all the seats and they redo a they redo the interior with like a gorgeous interior that is fit for a king, which is literally what it's fit for because that's who they're building it for, but that's besides the point. So there's there's not really a limit to what you can do in aviation if you're thinking about going into the field and you're not sure what kind of work is out there. Maybe you're already an electrician. There's plenty of electrical jobs in aviation. There are aircraft electricians that are very, very good at what they do. So there's, a, there's dozens of career options in aviation. You don't have to go turn a wrench all day on a flight line if you don't want to do that. There's plenty of jobs that are, as gently as I can say this, air conditioned inside of a hangar. You might not make as much money as the airlines because the airlines are really where all the money's at because that's where all the money's being made. But there's a million different things you can do. You can get certified to do non-destructive testing. You can, you can get certified, like I said, to do avionics installs. You can do interior work. You can do mods. You can do on and on and on and on. The possibilities in aviation are really endless. Um, so like I said, if I didn't mention what you do for a living or if you would like to give an example, uh, go ahead and drop that down below in the comments. If you're thinking about getting an aviation, uh, we welcome you to take a 147 program or go the practical experience route. I've done a dozen videos on that. Make sure you go and watch those if this was your first video. Uh, thank you for watching till this point. That is all I'm going to say at this time. I don't know how much I've spoke thus far, but as always, make sure you give me a uh, follow. Words are hard. Leave a comment, leave a like, follow me on Instagram, join the Discord, all of that good stuff. Subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos. Uh, make sure you share them with your friends. And as always, go build something. It'd be easy.